So get this right. I got this photo sent to me. Let me just bring it up. Somebody, one of my uh, close conspiracy theory friends. Oh, fuck, uh, I love it. We're starting with conspiracies. Yeah, dude. But this one's a, like an interesting one, right? Check this one out. And I looked it all up. I looked up all the dates. All right. So I'll read it out loud. Read it out loud. So World War One, I'm assuming, started on the 28th of July, 1914. Oh, I love this shit. 28 plus 7 plus 19 plus 14. The dates equal 68. World War Two started on the first <laughs> of September 1939. One plus nine plus nineteen plus thirty nine. The years halved equals sixty eight. The invasion of Ukraine was the twenty fourth of the second two thousand and twenty two. Twenty four plus two plus twenty plus twenty two equals sixty eight. They all equal sixty eight. Um, I, well, we haven't figured out what 68 is yet, but <laughs> when we do, bro... Thank fuck it's the invasion of Ukraine and not World War Three. <laughs> no, but, well, I mean, we're just going to change the name later on to oh, World shit. War Three. That is fucking spooky, How man. spooky, bro? It is. That is too spooky for me to, to look past it and say that's just a coincidence. They because all equal to 68. That is it. See, see, people find out that shit... The only way to work that stuff out is on the toilet when you're bored. <laughs> yeah. Because you have to look at a million other dates before finding that and go, oh, what if I cut the year in half? <laughs> yeah. The what? first half of 19 and then the other bit, you know? But there's none of that. I look, it fucking I, works. I looked up every date. I looked up the start of World War Two. That's the exact date. World War One. I, I believe World it. World War One exact date. And then I had to plus it all because I'm like, maybe the plus, <laughs> it doesn't equal 68. So you cross-checked it? <laughs> I cross-checked every angle. It all, should, it's all 68. That should be the way the news starts. Jennifer Kite, Channel 10, <laughs> 5 o'clock. Numerologists have confirmed that we're all fucked. Dude, there's something about it. I don't know. I, I'm feeling like there's it. this isn't just... Well, I said to you last week, I said, uh, I can't see World War Three happening, but now this is the first time in many years, because I'm an optimist, this is the first time I could see it happening. I could see it spilling over. But thankfully... NATO and America are smart enough to get involved. So, are smart enough to go, Ukraine, Ukraine I don't Ukraine. know if we want to fight over Ukraine. <laughs> but that's the thing. As soon as... That's what happens when... That's what hap- That's what America does, man. It got Ukraine's pussy all wet. It whispered at it in the bar going, why don't you have some freedom, baby? Yeah. You need freedom. <laughs> freedom is good. Fuck your fucking... Your boyfriend's a cunt. Look at us over here. We're having fun. <laughs> yeah, come with us. Come to Europe. You can wear mini skirts. You can meet a whole heap of guys. And she's like, yeah, I think, you know, my my boy, my ex Russia, he'll leave me alone. No, he fucking no, won't. He won't. No, no way. he fucking won't. And that's the crazy thing is, like, this dude's a comedian as well, an ex-comic. Yeah. And I want to be on his side just because he's an ex-comedian. Or, I don't even know if he's ex-comedian, but just a comedian in general. Let's let's unpack it slowly. First of all, okay. I, I, my eyes, I had a, a moment where my eyes rolled, and I wanted to ask you, does it just make you laugh now, or are you like... That doesn't surprise me. Indians, black people, brown people getting pushed back at the border to cross <laughs> over. Because <laughs> I saw that, I mean, oh, fucking hell, man. Yeah. That... We're, we're such cunts. Oh, my God. The one moment where you thought Ukraine was going to be like, guys, we're, we're the good guys. Yeah. And you, we gave them a chance to be the good guys. And they're just like, nah. Honestly, saying to like the black people, you're the fucking, you're the shield for us. Where yeah, are you going? You're pretty the, much. You're the human shield. We need you. Were you? Did you like? Does that when when you saw that? Were you like, oh yeah? I mean, it doesn't surprise me. Or were you like, oh man, that's fucked. Well, Poland's really racist, bro. Yeah. And they're all trying to cross into Poland, and Poland's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't changed. <laughs> we haven't yeah. changed who we are. Yeah. Because Poland, have you been to Poland before? Uh. This is a joke for my mates in England. I lived in London, so yeah, I've been to Poland because Pol- uh, London's full of Polish workers. Right. Because once Poland joined the Euro, they were allowed to migrate, so they all fucked off to England, and all the Polish people became plumbers, tradies, and were doing jobs for half the price, undercutting all the tradies right. in London. So tradies in London were like, this is bullshit. Like, we're getting screwed. So- and that was a primary driver f- to exit Europe for Brexit. Because they were like, you know, our tradies, they can't make a living because the Polish are coming in and undercutting and going, I do it for much less. Right. So the Polish are what the Indians are here for us. Yeah, yeah. Right. But everyone is like that, isn't it? Like China was in the 80s, I'll make, and we'll make anything, dude. We'll make anything you want. You want us to make fucking little toys, little cars? Right, yeah, we'll right, make right. it. 
give us peanuts. Mm -hmm. And now they've saved their money and they're big. That's, that's how it works, right? You grow into your... You start with open mic and then you just grow and, <laughs> you know, you get better. So do they seem like they were racist, the Polish that were in London? Man, I think fucking... Apart from us here really trying to work at it, I think most countries are racist. Right. Really? Yeah. Like, most of them harbor uh, a passion towards their own kind. Right. I think. Yeah. You know? For um, sure. They're trying to get women and children out, and they see a black guy. They're like, "Fuck you, dude! We're gonna We're get this the mother shit. and kid out first. Yep. Uh, it, it's a fucking tragedy. It made me. That's why I wanted to ask you. I'm like, "Fuck! Do you just does that make you roll your eyes or just go, man? It's not surprising. It's not surprising because for the Polish, I, I understand where the Polish people are coming from. There's immigrants running through that border for the last what, like five, six years. So to them, going, whoa, whoa, whoa! We don't even know if you're, if you're just like just." If you went to Ukraine just to get to here, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, did you just skip some sort of weird line and go? There's a fucking, uh, there's a doorway there that I could use. Yeah, but no, that was the fucking. Yeah, I was fucking, bo I was real bothered by it. I'm bothered by the whole thing, man. Whole thing. The whole thing just bothers me. The propaganda on both sides. I didn't think how, I didn't realize how powerful propaganda was. Ukraine. Just, yeah, have you realized that like, Ukraine's not an angel? It's not an angel. Ukraine's not an angel because they were. <laughs> I mean, if if you don't know, this, like this podcast is gonna be not for everyone, <laughs> but we're we're looking at it from a dispassionate perspective, right? Like if if you look at um, there's a there's an area in western Ukraine called the Donbass region, right? right? Luhansk, Donetsk, right? Um, that's heavily Russian, ethnically Russian, yeah, mm, fucking massively. Speak Russian, drink vodka, yeah, they're Russian. Over thirteen thousand Russian citizens died in the space of eight, nine years, according to the United Nations, from Ukraine military trying to suppress the insurgencies. Right. Those insurgents were getting armaments from Russia. So you can call it a fair fight in a way, but the, the Ukrainian military had jets and they were bomb they bombed a town hall uh, uh, in like 2013, killing heaps of civilians. They killed heaps of civilians, bro. What? But you've got it. That's how you get hatred on both sides. Yeah. And that, um, but we know, like you and I spoke about this and I think we both, you saw it the way I saw it. Like Russia told Ukraine from day dot, don't join NATO. We don't want NATO missiles in Ukraine facing Russia. Right. And if you don't do that, we'll leave you the fuck alone. Yeah. You just got to have a policy of neutrality. Yeah, and then Ukraine's like, well, I got my boys here. But my boys, hey, my boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the time they fucking... And they just <laughs> fucked off. And they go, look, man, we'll wear, we'll wear, uh, we, we'll change our profiles to blue and yellow. Yeah. Uh, we'll stand with you. We'll have flags and all that. We'll do protests. The propaganda, but, um, we'll, we'll flood it. We'll flood our system. Fucking social media, everywhere. And then they were like, yeah, t the first bomb went off and they were just like, whoa, hey, guys, can we... And then now they're trying to do no air spate, no air thing, right? And it, See, this is the whole thing. It feels like it's like Russia. Russia's playing a game called, I'm just going to fucking, I'm just going to show you my balls, bro. And you're not going to do anything because you know my balls are too big. Because right now they're saying anything that happens, like we're going to fuck up whichever other country is going to do this. Yeah. Do you see this? I don't call this a war. I call it a kind of slaughter. I think Russia is such a big bear. And it's in my mind, I have this visual of a, of a Russian big bear just getting up and grabbing a dog mm. and just biting its head off. Yeah. And to me, it sounds fucking awful, but Ukraine just doesn't have the military capacity to take on Russia. No way. It's not a fair fight, man. No way. It's not a war. It yeah. would have been a war if NATO supported Ukraine, but it's a fucking slaughter. Yeah. And that's the and whole point of the propaganda, really. Yes. Is because they're going to lose. So... And they need... Because, like, 20,000 Westerners went there to f go fight with them. Yeah. So the propaganda ends up helping them, in, not in the sense of winning the war, but just, like, boosting morale and making sure just chaos doesn't ensue within the Ukrainian army and the military and just the people in, in general that are on the ground. Yeah. Like... Because if you don't do that propaganda, because like he's like they're saying, like oh he's trying to go go after the nuclear, uh, he's our, our nukes, not our nukes, but just our nuclear facilities. That's just to go, guys. Look how serious he's taking this. Like mm. this is retarded. He he's not going to really blow them up. He's not going to. He, he's there's no chance he will. Because he's going to need energy. Yeah. So yeah. he's going to use them to his advantage. Mm -hmm. Um, 
What's your whole take on the Ukrainian president? This is, I'm torn. The comedian. Yeah, the comedian. We'll call him the comic. Right. I'm torn b- between the comic. He knows how, he, how to work a crowd, I'll tell you that. That's fucking great, mate. <laughs> Even from a bunker, he's crushing. <laughs> he's killing it. He's killing it. They love him. <laughs> he's a fucking, he's romantic, he's a hero. He's a martyr already. It works. Yeah. But have he, has he overstretched himself? Because... Um, someone, I don't know, so much, I would have, fucking, if I know this, and you know this, why hasn't his highest people told him, look, man, we can't join NATO, we have to shut the fuck up, we can only go so far, we can't anger Russia, if we anger Russia, we're in big trouble, and now they're in big trouble, so, has he overstretched himself, or, did he have no other choice, because, when, uh, Ukraine became a sovereign country in 1991, Mm. Everything was sweet up until 2000. When Putin came to power, he stayed in power since the year 2000. Right. And every so often, he's been fucking with Ukrainian politics. In 2004, Russia poisoned the then president of Ukraine. Right. They almost killed the cunt, bro. That guy, I remember yeah. him. Yeah, remember? He yeah. went from gorgeous skin to this fucking horrible <laughs> acne. My God, so many kids would be like, ah, you're better off dead, dude. That's gross. <laughs> Right? They fucked him. (laughs) So, that's Russia meddling in the affairs. And that motherfucker's been in power for 20 years. Right. So far. Mm -hmm. Putin hasn't gone. He keeps changing the constitution. He keeps adding another fucking five (laughs) pages. (laughs) Another five years stamp. I'm like, all right. Everyone's too scared to go up against him. So, my question is, is this comic, this president of Ukraine, a smart man because he's like, they're saying we're a free country, but if we don't join NATO, eventually they're going to poison me, they're going to poison the next guy. In 2013, right, Ukraine's president said, we're going to Europe, we're joining Europe, it's fucking happening. All the Ukrainians were like, fuck yes, finally we're going towards Europe, we're leaving Russia, it's romantic, we're going towards freedom, we're leaving communism, it was beautiful. Um... Then at the last second, he flew to Russia, came back from Russia, stony-faced like he had a big bucket bong. He's going, no, 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 we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> so I wonder what Putin whispered to him. He's going, yeah, you fucked. I'll kill all of you. Yeah, yeah. I'll kill you all. So he came back and said, no, no, we're not doing that. Everyone rioted. Kiev was burning. That's protesters. right, 2014, right? Yeah. Yep. And they said, oh, we better change. And um, they got rid of him. The people rose up, got rid of him. And then they got this other guy. And the other guy goes, yeah, I'll do it. We're going to Europe. And that's when Putin goes, fuck you, enough's enough. And he took Crimea. Mm. He took the whole fucking peninsula, bro. <laughs> that's like, like, it's huge. Yeah, it's it's like, like China taking from Frankston to Rosebud. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> My beach bottoms. house. Fuck your fucking beach house. <laughs> yeah. It's gone. I don't think there's any beach houses in Crimea, though. <laughs> Oh, well, there was, yeah. Was there? Well, I mean, it's a gorgeous place, Crimea. Is it? Yeah, it's a wonderful peninsula that stretches across over down to the Sea of Odessa near Moldova. Right. It's it's pretty gorgeous, yeah. Okay. Um, kind of looks like Greece, like the, the cliffs of Greece? Oh, I don't know to that extent, but this is based on Wikipedia images and right. Googling. It's, like, picturesque, and, like, lots of Russians would go down to that coast in summertime. Right. For, um, summer. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so that's that's that. How, how do how do your people feel about what's going? Because it's just next door, hey. Not just up the road, really. Yeah, it's up the road. <laughs> Greece is like just don't mention our name, <laughs> don't mention our name, and fucking just keep that Turkish pig away from us. Because <laughs> that Turkish pig Erdogan, he wants our island. So Greece hasn't said anything yet. We have we've just um, done what the rest of the world did in the the un and said oh this is this is bad only four countries abstained uh china north korea eritrea and another one i don't know why eritrea because eritrea getting fucked over by the thopians right now (laughs) (laughs) and they're like we've been calling you guys for years (laughs) literally (laughs) listen to ethiopia's been uh, eritrea's been crying for like two years now going these these they're doing it like full-on genocide the ethiopians on them Really? Uh, yeah. To this and, day? And yeah, nobody gives oh, a shit. fuck. I, so you're, are you Ethiopian? No, no you're Somali. Somali. Yeah. Right, so, um, okay, so they're going where with Russia so we can get Russian bombs to fuck Ethiopia. So hopefully, anyway. Hopefully. Or just get some fucking attention on their, on their, on their situation. But, yeah. Um, yeah, no, Ukraine, Ukraine's been warned a long time ago for, for fucking heaps of times. 2014, I'm surprised that it even went that far. I thought they were going to go in and, and stop that shit happening. 
Who? Putin and stuff. When they were going for their revolution, that little, uh, that moment where they had that, where they kicked out the, the what's his name? Uh, Pavlichenko or yeah, Yashenko, one of yeah, them. Yeah, Shenko, Shenko. When they kicked him out. Yeah. And they replaced him with uh, their Western-backed guy. Yeah. I thought that's when the Russia was going to go in. They only took Crimea, though. They took really. Crimea and they armed all the All the separatists. Insurgents. And then they brought down that plane. Yeah. Just to, which is what's a lot of the shit that's going down right now in the propaganda is that. Is like, uh, we'll we'll explode a school and just blame these cunts on it. We'll, yeah, because that's all the Ukraine's got at the moment. I don't think they've got an army, really. They, they've got they've got they've got a military, but they're foot soldiers now. Their air force has been rendered redundant because they can't get up into the sky, and they've damaged all their airports. <laughs> right. So right. they're they're just gonna be a fierce resistance group now. Right. It's fucking heartbreaking to watch, man. They're just making Molotov cocktails, and I know I it, saw. It, fuck it, it's heartbreaking, but. Um, then I looked at I, talk, I went back to Russia's propaganda right I, I, I watched Russia Today on YouTube mm-hmm. live streamed it for about 5-6 hours on a day off and um, so I was looking at their angle like what's Russia's angle and, and they're like um, it's the same story just flipped over to the other side yeah so their story is we had a heavy rich ethnic Russians that were dying at the hands of the Ukrainian military in the Donbass region right um, Ukraine passed the law uh, back in 2012 or 2013, don't quote me exactly, but you can Google it. They said something along the lines of, um, "We're outlawing Russian speaking. We have to. You, you got to speak Ukrainian. Right. Uh, we're pushing Ukrainian curriculum in schools. Ukrainian spelling. Ukrainian geography. Uh, we're moving towards Ukraine because the Donbas region is part of Ukraine. It's a sovereign nation. This is a, these are our rules. The, that made the ethnic Russians go crazy." Because they were like, you saying we can't speak? We've been here. We've been on this land, farming this land for hundreds, thousands of years. We can't use our fucking language, bro. That's when Russia stepped in. Russia gave them bombs, gave them guns. They started rising up and fighting the Ukrainian military. So that was their first point. Their second point was we're we're fighting Ukrainians. They're Nazis. They're Nazis. I'm like, what's this fucking Nazi shit? There's a there's an army in Ukraine in the Donbass region. The Azov Battalion. The Azov Battalion. Those motherfuckers are Nazis. Those they're are, not nice people. They're not nice, dude. <laughs> they're fucking cunts. They're not nice. <laughs> so, but the the, but leader, these motherfuckers, the comedians are Jew though. The comedians are Jew, exactly. But it's almost like your your enemy's enemy is now your friend, your friend now. Right. So it's like, all right, look, I'm a Jew. And you're a Nazi, but, but a Russians want to kill us both. Exactly. So let's fucking sort this out. And then later, the Azov Battalion <laughs> would have <laughs> risen up against him. You can pick back up where you left off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. I had you here in a chokehold. <laughs> I had your fucking building on fire. Yeah. But that's so crazy that is that, that, um, cause to Russians really, anything that comes from the West is a Nazi. I guess so. Right? Yeah. Anybody who comes from the West. And the crazy thing is calling them... Because right now, the propaganda, the way it's going, uh, they're calling the Russians Nazis. Like, the West is called... But it's like, no, the Russians defeated the Nazis. If it wasn't for the Russians, the Nazis would still... Hitler only blew his brains out because the Nazis were outside, not because America was you, outside. You mean the Russians? Hitler blew his brains out because the Russians were The Russians, were yeah, 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 not yeah. because America was outside. Yeah, you said Nazis, but you meant Russians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was because the, yeah, the Russians were outside, not because America was still... The, the allies, the Western allies, they were probably just made it over the border in, or trying to make it to Berlin. Yeah. Russia was the one who... And it's funny, even like you see it now, how it's just all... It's exactly that, where it's... Even Israel took their time to fucking say anything about Russia. And... They're scared to say much, but they called... They, but also, see, it was the Russians who freed them from Poland. All those Polish n- concentration camps, the Russians found them. Russia is... Poland is east of Germany, remember? Yeah. So Russia took Poland, America was taking France and everything else. So it's like, well, we can't yeah. even fucking say anything about that. It makes sense because the, the Jewish prime minister, the Isra- sorry, Israeli prime minister today said that he, he just had a meeting with Putin and right. he said he's a rational man, right. he's not prone to rage, yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. his head screwed on. Dude, that dude, he does have his head screwed on. Putin? You see any interviews Putin does, any of those like talks, man, he's got his head, like his head is on. He's 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 not lying. He's not like getting caught in gaffes, or he's not. They're yeah. not questioning his mental state ever. You you listen to the guy. He's fucking sound, man. 
Like really, I sound. have to. I have to agree with you, man. I, I watched him extensively. Uh, I saw this YouTube video where he's answering a Western journalist, and he said it's a simple issue. And this is going back eight years ago. He said it's a simple issue. We don't want NATO weapons on Ukrainian soil. It's mm. too close for comfort. Remember, right. remember Cuba. Yeah. What if we would approach? What if we were to approach Mexico, and Mexico was a communist country, and they were willing? to join us what if we came to your country and wanted to put nuclear missiles on mexico you'd be outraged you'd be doing what i'm doing right now on here telling you do not put nato missiles Bro, have you seen on that? this soil and she kind of just okay she yeah. got it it was so fucking crystal clear yeah. and that's where i'm like ukraine you should have read the situation <laughs> man yeah. it's like golf you got to play it as it lies yeah and they're not they're not gonna give, know it. They don't give a fuck about Ukrainians. They they're gonna kill NATO them. does not give a fuck about Ukrainians. You know what makes this vicious? They're brothers. They're they're from the same blood. A, they're like, both Slavs, right? Yeah, like a thousand fucking years ago, some Viking sailed across, anchored there, fucked a few birds there, and that gave birth to the Russian. Right. Or excuse my ignorance, the the, the Ukrainian, whatever. That the, was, was one blood. Kiev and Rus or something? Kiev and Rus. Right. Yeah. And ironically, Rus became Russia. Yeah, and the capital was Kiev. Yeah. And ironically, the first leader of this empire was called Vladimir. Right. And now you've got Vladimir the comedian versus Vladimir the Putin. His name's Vladimir too. Yeah, but in Ukrainian, <laughs> it's Volodymyr, oh, which is that Vladimir. Is great. Yeah, it's fucking Vlad's <laughs> everywhere. It's fucking Vlad's Vlad in crazy. Adidas fucking trackies. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah, it's nuts, man. It's off its head. That's so fun. Is there a lot of Ukrainians here in Melbourne? Did you know any growing up? No. No. Not I'm... even in soccer, because as a kid, I played a lot of... Me too. You know, we traveled to St. Albans, and we knew St. Albans was Yugoslavia. It was Croats, fucking yeah. Serbs. Yeah, St. So Albans. So we knew we were going to have trouble. <laughs> when we yeah. saw St. Albans on the fixture, we're like, oh, the Yugos, they're mad. <laughs> the mothers would have umbrellas and stab us on the sideline. <laughs> they're crazy. They're fucking cooked. So we were like, yeah. Um, northern suburbs was tor- Turkey, Lebanese teams. Yeah. You go more north. Uh, Moreland was like Pommy Can't remember Ukraine bro Yeah you, I don't know that many Ukrainians No I don't All of them are, that I do know Play judo as well They're a very like Judo related <laughs> Sort of Yeah They love their judo I know that Yeah right So does Somebody Pudo. had to put an end to it Is all I was saying So what do you how, What do you see this How do you see this ending I just see Putin taking it pretty quick like, well, what are we in, t- day 11 right now? Yeah, but what, when he takes it, it's not going to... How do you hold it? Like, how do you stop terrorist attacks? How do you stop people strapping bombs to themselves, blowing up parliament? And then what's going to... How's Channel 10 going to handle it or Channel 9? Is that going to be a freedom fighter or a terrorist? You can already see it's happening now. It's going to sound weird. It's, it's already like, happening now, yeah, bro. I'm, they, I'm, they okayed how many... Even Australia was like, if you want to go fight for Ukraine, you can go fight for Ukraine. Are you serious? Yeah, so that's literally we're funding extremism. Uh, or that's like insane. guerrilla warfare. The worst thing, did you see what we did to Russia, our economic sanctions? Yeah, no. I'm not making this shit up. You th- you're going to think I'm doing a piece of material. <laughs> then they said we're stopping neighbors airing in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Russians are like somebody call Putin. Yeah. Oh, Putin found that. He's like, <laughs> if you stop home and away, you cunts are fucked. I'll nuke you. <laughs> I need to know what happens in Summer Bay. <laughs> yeah, he'll nuke us. <laughs> yeah, that's the best we could do. That's hilarious. So you can fly to Ukraine and oh fucking hell. Yeah, that's where we're literally funding. Dude, but Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, they're like Saudis. We need you to do us a favor. We need you to pump more oil. So you bring down the price of oil because you'll supply and demand. You'll just flood the place with oil, right? Because Russia can't make a money off oil unless it's above a hundred dollars. Right. So, so the if price you bring, is going to go up. So if you bring the price down, so you increase supply to drop the price. Bring the price down to fifty dollars, sixty dollars a barrel. That's why. Russia can't make any money off it. Saudi uh, Arabia's like, listen, guys, this is our oil. It's not your oil. This is our oil. What did they say? We're not playing this game. No? We pump oil when we want to pump oil. Really? Not when you guys Uh, tell us to pump oil. Are they affiliated with Russia then? No, they just fucking love their oil. But also, I don't think Uh, they give a fuck, really. I don't think they care. It's not. It's happening down the street. Yeah, it's not their their war. Yeah. So they're just like, hey, this has nothing to do with us. We're not going to pump more oil for you just so you can bring down Russia. Yeah, because they they go through their reserves. We go through our reserves. They go through their reserves. Why would... Oil right now is $130 a barrel, you know? 
Mm. So it's like, why well, I would want it at one hundred thirty dollars a barrel. I don't want it to go. Do you know what I mean? Of course. So. Oh, that's insanity. There's no way they're gonna do it. No way. No way. Yeah, you tell it hit two dollars a liter the other day. That was insane. Yeah, now I see that it makes total sense. <laughs> Why the fuck would you tell them to put their? Pro- hey, can you make less money? <laughs> yeah, can you less profit, please? For would Ukraine? You- oh, fuck out They're of like, here! The Nazis? <laughs> just put them on hold. I'd put them on hold and just <laughs> yeah. leave the call. Let them work it out. I don't think he's coming back. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> What an idiot. That's a stupid thing. They'll never do that. That, that explains why. Because I didn't understand why America said, uh, yeah, two, a two-fold strategy. Elon Musk said, we need to uh, open up our holes in America and drill oil. Right. He goes, we need to drill oil. He goes, I'm sorry to all the hippies that are listening. Uh, and he said, all the greenies, but there's bigger issues here. We need to pump oil out of the ground. And the second one was... Uh, I think Biden said he's releasing 60 million barrels of oil a day from their reserve stock right. to try and drop the price. Shit. Mm. So it's just as expensive in America right now. Yeah, all, all over the world because they supply, uh, damn it, America, oh yeah, get this, America buys 650,000 barrels a day from Russia in oil and they're continuing to do so. <laughs> In a yellow and blue (laughs) t-shirt. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? America's like one of those... They're they're supporting black people with a pillow over their head, man. Yeah. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah, for sure. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, why would I want your support if that's what you're doing? And how do you do that? Like, we'll fund you... But we'll also buy these guys. We're funding both. We're bu- funding both sides. I absolutely, I absolutely adore it because it's the convergence of ethics and profit. Yeah, you know, I love it. It's yeah. the it's the meeting point. Yeah, and I adore that because <laughs> that's where reality and fantasy collide. Yeah, you got the real world motherfucker breaking on the shoreline of uh, reality and ethics. And but a lot of people I have left. It. I mean, fuck Nike left. Nike left. Adidas. PayPal. Visa, yeah. Mastercard, fuck yeah, bro, dude. The ruble's going down hard right now. Yeah, hard, man. like massive, dude. Dropped half already. Like, yeah. I don't know. I'm just thinking uh, the opposite of border security getting caught leaving Australia, flying to Russia with a suitcase full of Nikes and Apple iPhones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like where are you going? Oh, just personal <laughs> use. I'm gonna walk all over Russia because <laughs> I reckon if you land, if you can somehow get a truckload of Nikes into russia dude you go to the trendy areas of moscow wow you go i've got nikes the the latest ones the new release ones the fucking the new <laughs> jordan ones bro impossible <laughs> nah man i got them <laughs> imagine nike, what they yeah, pay the nike air invasions um, they'll fucking love it but if a dollar's half a cent for a ruble they'd have to give you 40k dude <laughs> you wouldn't have enough you, ba- no one but, wants russian money right now I don't even know how Russia survived to begin with. The, the ruble wasn't even fucking that great originally, before all this. Most Russians just hunt and eat off the land and freeze do to they? death. Yeah. Yeah, too, yeah, they, I don't know, it's a shit off. And everybody like Siberia, do they even, they're not even into money, are they? I don't know, do they they're have still electricity just, yet? I don't like, even know, bro. I think Moscow is it. Moscow and St. Petersburg. That's it, hey, those two. I don't know. The other grad one, what's I'm, that, Leningrad? Not Leningrad, that's Petersburg. Uh, that St. Petersburg, Stalin- yeah. Sta- Stalingrad? Stalingrad. All I know from Stalingrad, it was like the Germans went, don't, in Stalingrad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> they fucked up. Yeah, dude. It's fucking hectic right now. And you know what the sad thing is, man? I feel sorry for regular ass Russian people. Because they don't get, oh. they lose Netflix, they've lost. PayPal, PayPal Visa, Visa, MasterCard. They've lost their Nikes. They've lost their. Oh yeah, the, Russia's got three days to before to get their shit. They've told everyone get your shit together. We're unplugging from Western internet. Really? Yeah, completely. They're gonna start their own new server. Oh wow, where it's which, just them on it. Which begs, which which is interesting because going back to your numerology, this may be the for, the beginning of the fork in the road between two worlds. Like yeah. who was it? I think it was George Orwell wrote uh-huh. that. The, it's going to be five different types of communities on Earth. Right. This could be the first fracture, right. an, an emergence, yep. where Russians don't know what the fuck we do. Do you know? Do you know what he like said? It's once? kind of amazing. Sorry to cut you off, but You're it's right. amazing that me and you can do this podcast, and someone in Moscow can download it. Yeah. That's going to be that. Take, we take that for granted, mm-hmm. but in two years' time, that's gone. That's done. And, for well, sure. Three days' time. In three Sorry, days. What, what were you saying? Um. 
shit, I forgot what I was saying. But Sorry, man. You're right, you're right. But it is, it is fucking, it, it's, it's pretty hectic. This is what I, this is what I, I, I watched the interview not long ago where Vladimir Putin was like, you need me there. I know I, I look like the enemy to you guys, right? But you need there to be a counter to what the other world is. Meeting America, the West, NATO, the our outside, our team. He goes, you can't have a world where they're in control. Because you have a world where they're in control, then we're all fucked. He goes, you need the counter opposite for that, to keep them in check. Do you believe that? 100%. But what about Poland? Poland's part of NATO, and I mean, I think Ukraine is jealous of Poland, because Poland is the older sister that has got a thriving life. She left her horrible ex-boyfriend, Russia, and has a wonderful life now. She's mm. part of Europe. Mm-hmm. Um, Poland's starting to thrive I economically. The Ukrainians are just... Polish like they're, people migrated and got better lives in England. Are they, are they just the... I feel like they've just been getting fucked over a lot. I mean, even Genghis Khan fucked the Ukraine. Genghis Khan made it all the way to Kiev. Yeah, right. So it's like, I don't know why the Ukrainians get fucked so much. Because he's not even fucking Estonia and Latvia. And they went to NATO, didn't they? And they used to be USSR. Mm. But he's not even fucking with them as much. And they put missiles there and everything else. Was it you that told me Genghis Khan, when he conquered a certain people, he... um built a stage and he crushed them all on top of the stage and he ate for like three, four days while he could hear him crying and getting squashed to <laughs> death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it wasn't... <laughs> Fuck. If they... No, if it was, I think it was only if they... Uh, Resisted him. No, if they turned their back. If they said, yes, come in, and then as soon as he left with his army, they were like, Fuck that guy. Yeah. And then he had to come back. If he have to, if he has to come back, you're all fucked. Dead sir. Yeah. If I leave and you guys are all cool and then I and then I hear no, you guys are lying to me this whole time and I've gotta come I'm gonna turn this army around, this hundred thousand strong army. And it takes them a while, you know, doing a U turn with a hundred thousand people. It's like it's not easy. And there's always a messenger though that's ahead of time that runs like the sea yeah. to let like all he gets to the he comes back all hot. <laughs> <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, he's coming. He's done a U turn. He's about <laughs> how many days, man? How many days? <laughs> well, five, five days? <laughs> Fuck. What do you get do? Get out of there. Get out. Get out. Let's <laughs> go to the airport. There's no airports, bro. It's 1300. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Um, hide. I don't know, man. Even this, like, this this war right now, it, 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 it's pretty fucking scary. I didn't think war was going to be that. I'm sure war was always that in Afghanistan, but they just don't have camera phones to show us wh- what it looks like on the ground. And yeah. now we're getting videos off on the ground that I'm like, this is more brutal than I thought it was. It's fucking horrific. I yeah. Just... I didn't think I was going to see that many limbs laying around and body parts. Yeah. And, and what, what cut me the most was I saw, um, I, sh- I shouldn't have done it. I came home stoned. And when I'm stoned, everything's more sensitive. Right. And uh, I saw like Ukrainian parents... Uh, kissing their children goodbye. Right. And they knew they'd never going to see him again. Men. Ki- men. Kissing, yeah. kissing their children goodbye. K- sorry, kissing their me- children, men goodbye as they were getting ready for war. And you could see into their parents' eye. And one, I saw the father, and the way he was looking at his son was both uh, beautiful and... Um, horrific. Horrific at the same time. Like right. f- filled with pride but also a deep knowledge that he's never going to see his son again. Wow. And he's just so proud of the way he's defending his country to the end now. And it's his journey now to let his son go and die for a country where he probably knows is going to be lost because he's an elderly man and he knows Russia's past. And you just see in his eyes when I was looking at him, I go, fuck, man just feels like um, before you before you uh, enter this life you have like all these emotions and feelings and like you look down happiness love joy that what is that feeling to stare into your son what do you, to feel that it's like wow it's indifferent it's something else yeah it's a mixture of em- emotions all swelling up right and that just cut me a whole lot I was like fuck I wish I didn't see that stoned yeah because I, I, I just I became the father. I just felt what the father was feeling for a split second. Right. I'm like, that's your boy. You're never going to see him again, man. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, could you fight for your country? If China said they were coming right now, would you strap it on or would you get your Greek passport out and fly home? (laughs) Fly to your real home. (laughs) 
all I know is that if I think that if China said they're coming, I think China would get on the sal- satellite images from space and just laugh, hysterically laugh when they see the biggest convoy line of e-scooters heading north. <laughs> Away from the city, <laughs> all these bitches and pussies <laughs> getting away from Melbourne at 10 k's an hour. Yeah, for we, sure. We wouldn't fight. I think I, I don't know. There's ha- too many because like, you do the do you do the math. There's 25 million of us. There's a billion of them. So that's like we got that's like 13 people each. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna take on 13. <laughs> Can't. Yeah, it's too. It's impossible. Yeah, it's too. We'd have to settle it somehow else. I don't know. Well, like, we just do. take Western Australia and just leave us with this. Yeah. Well, yeah, have Western Australia. That's all they want, really. That's where all our good shit is anyway. All our mining and... Yeah. Western Australia are proud of themselves because they don't have pokies. Right. But if we turn off all their mine sites, they'll get pokies. Yeah. Because <laughs> we have no way of making money to the extent that they do. But to answer your question... um. I think I'd like to say, oh, yes, I would fight, but I don't know, probably not, man. I spoke with my uncle who's 74, and he was in Melbourne um, when they drew his name for conscription to Vietnam. Right. And uh, he packed his bags and left, and he was heading towards uh, Greenvale, Mickleham, which was just all bush. And uh, he got wind that there was a group of people there, and they were all going to go into hiding together. And but, he he had he had heard about the group of people there before he left. Yes, it was right. a common knowledge around like, hey, if you got conscripted, uh, head head up to Greenvale. There's like people just disappearing into the woods, just camping, going right. rogue. Right. Um, that I can understand because Vietnam was, you know, just Google Muhammad Ali for the most inspirational thing about Vietnam ever. Why yeah. he didn't go. Right. Um, but yeah, if they came here. That's a different story. So did he? He didn't get. He just stayed in the bush. For... Yeah, he went to fuck off, but then they cancelled. The war ended. He was he was on the tail end. Right of yeah. the war. Okay. Then there was another man. I know two other people that went to Vietnam. Uh, Scotty, who drinks at the pokies, but he was on board a navy ship. Right. Lucky. And yeah, and he um he reckons we just fucking bombed him. Just fucking bomb. Didn't stop bombing. They had no ships, so I didn't give a fuck. I wasn't in any danger. <laughs> and um, Scott is wonderfully racist, and I haven't said anything to him, but uh, he uh, he thinks uh, I'm an Aussie. Right. I don't know why. Wait until he finds out you're Vietnamese. <laughs> but he looks around when he does that, you know, <laughs> and he leans in and he goes, "There's a lot of." Fucking wogs here, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't told him. I never will. It'll break his heart. And I'm like, fucking too right, mate. There's a whole heap of them cunts. That's great. Uh, and the second guy I know went to Vietnam um, is cooked. He comes in every morning at 9 a.m. He gets a shot of black coffee with a 30 mil shot of Johnny Walker in it. What? Yeah, it's called an Irish coffee. Right. Just to forget about the Japs, the S- Vietnamese. Slams it. And uh, sits in the corner and sits there all day playing Kino, whatever. Um, yeah, reliving his conscription days. Right. And then I, um, I once I asked him, Scotty, uh, not Scotty, the other guy, Nick, uh, I said, what was it like? And uh, he just looked down and uh, he didn't say anything to me. And then um, about half an hour later, he came up to me and he goes, you're, you're a good fella. You're a good fella, Johnny, but uh, you never... He's Italian. Never, never talk about that again. Ever, ever. You, ne- you never, you never say wow. that. Ever, ever. And then I told this other guy, and he goes, "What'd you bring that up for? Nick's fucked. He saw the worst shit over there." Really? Yeah. And he inspired me to watch Deer Hunter again because he reminded me of Christopher Walken. What he saw. Right. It's crazy. <laughs> I can't do it. No. It's a crazy time. Yeah, I saw this shell shocked. I saw a video of a dude who, all he, he just gets shown the helmet. From World War Two, yeah, and he's just like, ah, oh, uh, it's his helmet too, or his team's helmet. You'll... It's just the helmet. He's like, ah, 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 get it away from me, get it away from me. And it's like, it's just the fucking helmet, bro. Can't, you know, yeah. you, couldn't, you do, couldn't. Do not go to war is the fucking message, man. You'll never be the same again. I spoke with another guy who's uh, Yugoslavian, and he went on holidays to um, 
Bosnia after the war, late 90s. He reckons they're cooked. The guys were cooked. Really? They were all strung out on drugs, meth, just half of them limbs torn off, crawling through the streets post-war. Just all his cousins were gone. Let's just... Only a very rare few were able to just cut the war out, put it in a separate room in their mind and shut that door and forget about it. Yeah. You know, but most of them, they couldn't, you know. That Bosnian one was hectic though. Vicious, yeah. Yeah. Because that was like massive war crimes. That was, yeah, that was the... That was crazy, that one. Everybody's mum died. Everybody's sister got raped. Everybody's... Man, the worst... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, it's, it's fucked. <laughs> yeah. It's fucked. And so this other lady came up to me. Um, her name's Elizabeth. And we were talking about the, the war. And she said... She started crying. And I was like freaking out. And anyway, long story short, she told me that her, her son killed himself, shot himself uh, through the mouth in when he was 42 years of age. And he was a decorated soldier... Did uh, two tours overseas. Vietnam? Uh, no, Afghanistan right. and then Iraq or Iraq, then Afghanistan. When he was in Iraq, he reckons this is all he kept telling his mum. The only one story, they were guarding a hangar full of dead bodies, not in um, not in body bags, just stacked on top of each other. Oh, wow. I don't know why they had to guard the bodies, but they were just there and, and he reckons that image he did his duty um was decorated um but when he came back she kept calling she goes my boy was blackened my boy was blackened my boy was blackened and he shot himself at 42 years old 42 years of age he killed himself so you what yeah like what what is ukraine gonna be in 20 years time all this ptsd is gonna come through in in drugs and and i think what we need i mean the the ptsd in iraq was isis basically yeah. That was the PTSD. And I think it's great to stand with Ukraine. I understand you can't, we can't fucking send planes. We can't send bombs because we don't want to anger Putin to spill mm. over into World War Three. But I think the best humanitarian effort we could do post-war is um, many, many, many years of fucking free therapy. Oh, dude. For whoever wants it from Ukraine, free therapy. Like you get a rebate. If you're living in Poland, you get a government rebate. To be a psychologist for a, a, a mum that's been displaced with her son, or a soldier that's seen too much shit, years of therapy, however much they need, because they're gonna bottle it up because they're men. Men don't talk about that shit. Yeah, no, no way. Especially in Europe, we're from a different ilk here. We're more progressive. Yeah. Like I could, I could get on stage and say, "Oh, I cry. Yeah, I take <laughs> mushrooms and I cry. The world is beautiful. Woo! You, you can't do that over there. You got to be a fucking man." Yeah, dude. And they're going to bottle it up, these cunts, and their heart's going to explode. They're going to belt their wives. They're going to take it out on other shit. They're going to shoot a dog in the head. They're going to go bananas. And the fact they're neo-Nazis too, yeah. some of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be even worse. Like, you don't want an extremist neo-Nazi. That shit is like, you know, of, of course, you know what comes out of that. But, yeah, it's fucking scary, man. Like, I haven't, like, I mean, I'm not scared that I'm going to get conscripted or anything like that. I'm just fucking terrified this shit's going to blow to a point where I have to do something. Not conscripted so much, but just even if it's flee this country or flee a country or... If you have to flee this country, yeah, the world's over. You'd think so, right? We're so far away. Where are you going to flee to? Tasmania or New Zealand? They're your only options. I'm going back to Africa. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you guys, yeah. Because they're not going to come to Africa for for years. Well, they're not, yeah. Russia wants Africa, though. It wants more influence in Africa. And I'm not saying so much Russia. My fear is not Russia. My fear is China, bro. That's my only fear. My fear is China going, fuck, if they can get away with that and no one does shit. Have they done, have they made inroads into Somalia with one belt, one road, their vision? Well, dude, they've already bought out, like, just about every port, city, every port. In Somalia? Yeah. They're fucking in. Yeah, they're they're in. They're in hard. Mm. Like... Right now, so America, th- America really right now is trying to like really give us a little bit of something to stand on. So then when the tr- Chinese really do come, they can be like, no, we, we helped you. And so instead of us going, go fuck yourselves, we could be somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think the cards have fallen favorably for America right now? I think it's done. In terms of America, they can now say, we have economically crippled Russia. We won't get involved in the war. Putin will win Ukraine. But at what cost? Such an extraordinary cost that we've crippled his country economically. Yeah. They can deflate and we can now focus on the biggest threat, China. So has America just 
Ta-da! Nah, I think... We're I think, lucky. I think their empires are over, bro. I think that empire... And the way I see it as Which well... Which empire? America? The, Ameri- the whole Western empire. I reckon that whole Western empire is... If but you ask me... But it ha- if, if you it, ask me, they climb higher, they reach higher, but they crash quicker and they... And it and they crash more devastatingly. Yeah, you know where if you look at the Roman Empire, they stayed for a very long time, and uh, the climb was very high, the highest. But then the English Empire being after them, I'd, I'd say it'd be the there was like the Mongolians, yeah, but they didn't. But as a, like an em- a world empire, the English they made it very fucking high, and they only lasted a very short amount of time, like four hundred years, five hundred years, mm. way shorter than the Romans did. Now America's turn. America going from let's say World War Two, World War One to now, even higher than they did, and then they're going to crash even faster. I think every empire from now on is going to climb higher and crash faster, and crash more devastating. That's interesting. And I think it's coming soon for our one. I mean, it depends on who we who we back after it. But then we're fucked. We won't be able to do stand up and say what we want. Do podcasts like this and bag China. No, but it could be you a just diff- go missing. It bro. could be a du- it could be a new China after the war. Nah. You don't think so? Just no. because they win doesn't mean it's going to be them. I they could win and also have a revolution with they w- winning. They won't sacrifice their ideologies. I mean, look at... Uh, like, for example, Russia. They've shut down independent media outlets. They've kicked out all the Western journalists. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've, they've, they're, they're jailing anyone who speaks out about the war. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Yeah, that's hectic. You know? But, see, this is the thing about Russia. Because it's so big. Right, and you know how they carved out before it was the USSR, and they after that fell in ninety one. How many countries you could carve out from it? Pretty much all the stands, all of Yugoslavia, Bosnia, Croatia, uh, Serbia, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. So then, when you were think they about, all part of USSR? They were all part of USSR. Okay, the stands, Georgia, um, a few other countries, Kazakhstan. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the stands. I think there's a few more places. Um, but the point is... Uzbekistan? Uzbekistan, all of them. Uzbekistan, yeah. Kajakistan. Uh, all the stands. Chikistan, all the stands. So then it's like, how many more countries can we pull out of this fucking landmass that there is? See, think about how many peoples we pulled out. Because they're not all Slavs. Like, once you get out, uh, east of a certain line, they can't be all Slavs no. anymore. They've got to be the stanny looking people, mongolian looking people. So, so, like, America's really just like, let's just keep carving the fucking thing until it's more countries get out of it. Mm. You know, more more land masses can be carved out of it. It's them going to Ukraine. Ukraine was ours, which is, I mean, they think they have a right to have Ukraine, I'm assuming. They're both Slavs and whatnot, and they're like, yeah, that's, you're more my people than you are their people. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, and then you look at a lot of countries that are like that. If, if you look at Ethiopia, Ethiopia's... Ethiopia's got, like, fucking five different people in Ethiopia. They're not all Ethiopian, whatever the fuck that is. That's just some bullshit, some some cunt pulled out of his ass during independence. Really? So they're, like, five dominant, prominent tribes? Dominant, dominant tribes, like... So of the five, they agreed, let's just call it Ethiopia. No, it's Ethiopian one political party has, gotcha. has, is ruling... A, like, you know, have you heard of the Tigray people no. in Ethiopia? They're also the ones that are getting fucked over. They're more uh, Eritrean, these Tigray people. Right. But a lot of it's like a lot of their land is in Ethiopia because when Ethiopia took over that whole region after World War Two or during that World War Two period, when they took that whole region, they just took yeah took what they could take and what they, what they wanted to take, which is weird because I don't really understand how it works after war. It's like like you really we fucked over Russia so bad. So then how the fuck did we give them back that much land? You know? Like, after 91, what? why didn't they take Donbass and Luhansk to begin with back in 91? Because at the time, they gave up more land. Like, they sat down at a table in 1991 and signed over. They signed a contract saying, we recognize Ukraine as a sovereign nation. And these are the borders now. Right, so they made the borders, and yeah, they didn't include Donbass. The Donbass Lama. region wasn't included. Right. So the Donbass people were like, "WTF? <laughs> yeah. We're Russian. <laughs> what are you doing? Wrong why? side of the line." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why a lot of people value Putin because he's trying to restore the boundaries from errors made in the past, oversights. 
Right. Like accommodating Russian people, looking after the Donbass region, blah, blah, blah. Right. And the Donbass people fighting Nazis, which mm. they were, mm-hmm. the Azov Battalion. So on paper, it's romantic. It's a good cause. Yeah. You know what I find disgusting about warfare and interesting at the same time? Uh, common stories when um, the English go to war, they send the Scottish in first. Right. Um, That's why I don't want to join a war that oh, you're fucked, we bro. are backed by. It's like South Park. You'd be strapped to a tank. I'm, right? I'm at yeah. the front, for sure. <laughs> the front for sure. It'd be just these big fucking <laughs> burly Aussie blokes just go, what the fuck? <laughs> you're, not in the, you're not in the warehouse. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ukrainian soldiers are reporting Russian soldiers uh, that they shoot when they go and check the bodies, they're fucking Chechenian. Muslims, yeah. Yeah, Chechenian and Syrian. But they're and Russian too. Anyway, Syrian. Okay. And Syrian. Yeah, they've drafted Syrian soldiers. Wow. Yeah, man. That's fuck. That's Assad. That's that's Putin going, Assad, you owe me. You owe me, <laughs> you owe me at least 20,000. All right, I'll give you a few pieces. <laughs> yeah. It's fucked, isn't it? Fucking good on him. <laughs> the whole thing's a proxy. The whole world is in a proxy war at the moment. Yeah, right now is yeah. proxy central. Proxy in Yemen. Yemen is a proxy yeah. between us, Iran, and Saudi Arabia. It's careful. It's careful warfare. It's great though. It's great. It's it's it's, it's new- war in suits. It's like, look, let's uh, let's not be crazy here. We'll respect your no fly zone. We don't want a World War Three. But we'll, um, you know, we'll send them anti-aircraft missiles, and yeah. we'll we'll leave the borders open if uh, mercenaries want to flood in and join, and we'll supply them with weapons. <laughs> yeah. And Putin's gone, okay, cool, cool, uh, but no planes, any planes or no fly zone, <laughs> uh, they they're in, they're in the fight. It's yeah. like, all right, all right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're all. He, like, he's, do you think he'll declare war on somebody else? No, but I think if he he will go fucking ape shit. If uh, Polish fighter jets take off from Poland and fly across... To try to attack him. Yeah, he will destroy Poland. He will fucking go nuts, man. See, I thought Poland was always kind of cool with Russians. No, because Russia, like, fucking smashed Poland. That's right, took it in the world. They smashed him. It was was brutal. But um, someone, I I forget who it was, but it was... uh, I forget his name, but he said Putin's come too far. He's a war expert. And he's a Russian expert in military history. He said, right. Putin's come too far. Putin has stuck his neck out. Right. He has to win. Right. It's He has to. Of course. He has to. So no, he has to. By threatening nuclear weapons, that's his way of saying, back the fuck off. Let me do this. I need to win. And then there'll be everything will be okay again. Right. His end game, this is where I need to... We need to wrap this up because I've got to go to a gig. But... Um, What's his end game? I'll tell you mine quickly. I think take all of Ukraine, hold it. I think that'll be fucking hard without terrorist attacks or as we call them, freedom fighters. Right. Um, install a puppet government and hold elections. Or sorry, the other way around. Uh, install, uh, hold elections and raise a puppet government. How does he do that? The same way Stalin did it. Stalin fucking starved Ukrainians to death in the Mm. 30s. Mm. Starved them to death. When they died, he just moved in Russian citizens. Right. And held elections. Oh, a Russian has won. I knew it all along. (laughs) Right. So Putin could... Putin's bombing civilians because he wants them gone. Get the fuck out. Yeah. You're gone. You had months. You had months and you had years. I told you from day one. I'm being the devil's advocate here. Apparently, there are lo- they're, it, they're, they're military sp- spots, those places. Yeah, but he's still shelling civilians. Yeah. They're, they're, he's shelling them indiscriminately. He wants yeah. them gone so he can bring in his own citizens and hold elections. Right. Um, I think Putin can sleep easy at night, in his opinion, because of the if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Mm. He was building up for months. 
Mm. And he kept saying, it's exercise. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> you don't need 100,000 troops and a million trucks and tanks as for exercises. Could you imagine your neighbor who you have a dispute with is just out your front door every day just doing exercises and stretching? And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, this crazy cunning wants to kill me. No, or just he, he drops a picnic blanket on your driveway and he starts cleaning his rifle. <laughs> yeah. Like, good morning. <laughs> and you're like, holy Hello. fuck, dude. Just cleaning my rifle, man. You've it's got nothing. Nothing, nothing to worry about. Just go for a jog. With yeah. my rifle. <laughs> yeah. Nothing to worry Exercise, about. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> How are your parties going? I uh, hear they wrap up at 11 now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate them to, if they go over 11. <laughs> All right, man. I think I get it. I think I get it. And you just see in his eyes, you just see a little nuclear explosion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think that's the this end is what game. I think. That, that's my opinion of the end game. No, I think my end game is I know one thing the Russians ain't going to be fucking with another Putin, like the next Putin. So Putin can't, Putin doesn't have a successor and cannot have a successor, right? He can't even like prop somebody up and go to the Russian people, hey bro, check it, get a look at this guy, he's fucking, he's crazy, he's like me, he speaks well, he's nice, I'm going to give him the empire mm. and let him continue it. They're going to be like, nah, what the fuck are you talking about? We don't, we barely like you. A lot of them do love him. But for the most part, it, it's going to be a hard call. It's going to be hard, uh, fucking thing to, you know, because they're going to be like, another 20 years of this other dude that we don't, we definitely don't like, you know? And the Russian oligarchs who fucking run the joint and the KGB and stuff, they're thinking the same thing, I'm sure. They probably know. We we cannot get another KGB agent to be the next Russian fucking dude. So I think before he dies, I think he's just going to go for glory. Okay, so you think this end game is not going to stop at Ukraine? No, I think it's going to stop at at least creating more of a buffer between Russia. What's, what, what's while you left, can, bro? What, Let's look at the maps. Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, they but were all... They're NATO members. They used, yeah, they are NATO members, but they're also ex-Soviet uh, Union countries. But the article, it's a breach of Article 5. Once Article 5, once you attack a NATO country, it's all out war. NATO have to join forces, like mm-hmm. Turkey, uh <laughs> Greece will supply Slovakia. Um, <laughs> all the uh, France, England, everyone has agreed. I know, but what are we going to do? It's not like it's going to be trench warfare. We're going straight to nukes, though. That's what I mean. That's why Putin can't. That's why he wanted Ukraine before it signed over NATO. He goes, "Oh, well, you're not fucking signing because once you sign, it'll be all out war. So I'll get it before." He's like, "I'm right. doing the world a favor. I'll take Ukraine now to stop World War Three. People are saying Moldova. Right. He'll take Moldova. I think Georgia, back to Georgia, wouldn't he? He's got Georgia, hasn't Does he? he? I don't know. I thought Georgia was like kind of that state where it was like... In fl- uh, yeah, 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 but more to the west. All right, so you think he's going to go further, but he's depleting his not, troops Not now. further east. I don't know if it's further east, but it is... I think he will go further in the sense of try to... Like, the only way he can keep his people at bay... He, remember, he has to keep his people suppressed as well. And the only way he can do that is with more power. Mm. And a war like this will give him more power, you know, and keep his people at bay. But I can't see him handing over to a successor. And his time's coming up, man. The dude's not young, you know. That's what I mean. That's why I think it has to be short, sharp, quick. I think he he, he has to capture Ukraine. He has to install a puppet government, make it loyal to the, uh, the to Russia. To Russia. Um, possibly take Moldova if he's feeling frisky. Right. Um, Belarus is his bitch, so that's his buffer, and he knows no you, no NATO missiles will be on that soil, which gives him a nice buffer, and in my opinion, gives the world a nice buffer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, your side, my side, and then a nature strip apparently, down the middle. Dude, apparently there's like five biochemical labs in Ukraine run by America right now. They were showing up maps. I saw it the other day though on Reddit. There was like these maps on, and they were like, "Check out these five places. They're all five biological weapons facilities, basically. Uh, like chemical weapons, chemical like weapons, viruses and shit. Viruses. It's Holy not so much fuck. chemicals like chemicals, but viruses, um, like Corona 2.0. <laughs> oh man, don't do just that. targeting <laughs> Russia. <laughs> don't do that. If that fucking blows up and leaks, we're fucked. The world's <laughs> fucked. No, I mean, uh, he's already taken down a couple. Has he? Yeah, he's already taken down a couple. Fuck. You know? But, I mean, all the best to him. I hope I, I hope he's doing this for our sake and not his sake. And it doesn't seem like he's doing it for his sake. 
He's not doing this. He, he's not doing it for more. I can't see him doing it for more. I think it's paranoia reasons. Not. Uh, I'm t- trying to take anything. Like how we, how our propaganda is telling us what he's doing. Our propaganda is like he's just going. Mmm, ha, 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 he's I'm also evil. In, in the words of Russia today, the their news source. He's afraid of NATO expansion. Yeah, NATO expansion. The biggest members of NATO are countries that colonized other countries and pissed and brought them into slavery and treated people, treated the natural people, the indigenous people like fucking shit. Right. So he's like. He under as as a Russian, he looks at that and he's like, "They're a cancer." Yeah, NATO is made up of a cancerous culture of <laughs> yeah. colonizing and bringing populations to submission and yeah. rendering them as slaves and shipping them off to plantations to make your fucking money. And now you join NATO, you're going to pass your laws onto our way. No, 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 no fucking way. Ukraine's not leaving. Ukraine is Russian. Ukraine is from Russian blood. Ukraine Ukrainians and Russians we're one. You're not taking. You're not taking Ukraine. No. I will not have missiles on Ukraine. So, and you will. It, it's, it's it's a trophy. It's um, it means too much. Ukraine. So much, man. It, it means more than just NATO missiles. Yeah. It's um, it's the spirit of Russia. It's like yeah. we are. We were one. Kiev and Rus. A yeah. thousand years ago. Yeah. We were born from one city, Kiev. Yeah. That was our birthplace, and uh, you're not fucking taking it. So fuck your NATO, dude. It's so scary. And NATO, bro. Like all these fucking people leaving at Russia right now, it, if you l- Russia's lucky it can make its own food, because we would stop food going to the Russians. That's how fucking serious we are about, mm. like, putting him down. That's how serious we are about carving the place. We would stop food going into Russia, which is the scary thing, because like I think our side is just as like Russia has something to complain about. Our side seems psychopathic when it comes to trying to. You know, do pull off its moves. You know, yeah. our moves are, our moves are fun. Okay with it, what Saudi Arabia is doing. You know what I mean? Yes. Okay with what Israel's doing. Yeah. Okay with what a lot of the world's doing. China in the Uruguay, Nike is okay with what China's doing because they use some of those fucking detention camps. And Nike's just leaving Russia right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, because it's 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 a, it's it, the hypocrisy is fucked up, dude. That's why you got to read both sides and appreciate. Because then you, you get a, you have a better understanding of, and yeah, you you put a finger up at Russia and a finger up at NATO. Yeah. It's like fuck you both. You're not get off your fucking high horse. Yeah, bro. You're no better. Because yeah, you stop. still make iPhones in China for fucking two dollars an hour. Yeah, get fucked. Because I don't see how NATO's. Because since they're not going in, they're like, we're not going into Ukraine to help them. Okay? So we'll just send all, like, we'll send military equipment, la da 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 But So but what's their tactic? What's their game plan? Who's NATO's? Yeah. NATO's head is America. And this is why I think, if I can think of this here in Brunswick on an average IQ, I think the biggest think tanks in America have thought this through and have come up with a win-win situation. Either Ukraine joins NATO and we put our missiles there facing Russia, encroaching upon Russian territory and suppressing their dominance, or two, we lose Ukraine, Ukraine falls to the side and gets destroyed, but we impose such strict economic conditions on Russia, we emotionally and economically fucking throw them back into the dark ages and we win again. And then we can turn our attention to the biggest force coming our way, China. Right. That's my honest opinion of how I think it's played out. And I think Ukraine So take 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 China's best friend out now before you take out yes, the boss. And bef- and I fall short of calling Ukraine stupid because I think Ukraine had no other option because ever since the year 2000 when Putin came to power, he's been fucking with Ukrainian politics trying to bring down presidents that are trying to take ukraine towards europe Mm. and that's his way it started in 2004 and it's his way of saying you're not fucking leaving my grasp it's like jabba the hut on a chain with princess leah you're not (laughs) going nowhere bitch (laughs) yeah so that's great anyway man um, are you doing anything over the festival? Give it a quick plug. I'll post this on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, come down. Me, Mimi, and Matt O'Neill are doing uh, Die Already. Die yes. Already at the Colonial Hotel. Yeah. F- six shows over two weekends. Uh, when is it? 
Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, it's it'll be the first one, thirty first of March. Yeah, is the first one on a Thursday. So the first three days, then after that, and then uh, the seventh, eighth, and ninth. Yeah, that's Die Already Colonial Hotel or Google Kings of Comedy. It's probably up on the website there. Yes, it is. Awesome. All right, thanks a lot, Izzy. Thank Appreciate you. it, man. Appreciate it, bro. Bye.